Welcome back to another episode of Showcase Movie Musical Podcast in which we talk about visual albums. Yes. Uh, <laughs> visual albums with a plot? Sure. Mm. I hope this is a welcome back. I hope this is no one's first episode. This would not be the one to start with, I have to say. I disagree heartily. Really? really? Yeah, I think this is... I think we're going to get into some real nitty gritty... Oh, dissertation. What is what is a musical? Is that what's going to happen? Yeah. Some Sisus? Okay. Um, I this is my pick. It is my birthday next Friday. <laughs> happy as time birthday. Of, happy birthday! As the time of this episode dropping, it'll be my birthday next Friday. So, what do you uh, want to do for your birthday? We have not. Oh, we're watching Ooh. a concert. We're going to Just a kidding. concert we're that going night. We're going to a concert that oh, night. Oh, okay. Um, so we are doing something new in Showgaze. We did it for Molly. She got to pick what movie she wanted to do for the mm-hmm. beginning of December. Mm-hmm. Um, so I picked... I originally had a different movie picked for this. And then the conversation around this piece, and I really mean piece. I truly yeah. mean this piece. Was just so discoursey mm-hmm. that I was like, well, we, we gotta get in on that. We need to really explain to the girls what's going on with people this. People love yeah. our hot takes. People, people love it. Well, and we, ha- as we've said that we are the, we're the entire zeitgeist. Like there's no reason to go yeah. anywhere else to get anything. So right. we are the queers that are at the avant-garde of camp. And the, I think a question that should perhaps hang above this episode is, is this camp? Oh, that's such a good question. A Thank question you. we've never asked before on this podcast <laughs> ever. Um, Molly, how are you doing? You were ill. You sound like Ill. you're recovering. Yes, I apologize to listeners. My voice is going to be a little rough. Um, I just had a cough and uh, trying to get over it, but working with kids, difficult to fully rest your vocal cords. So it's a little rough. Well, and it didn't help that you, you know, were screlting out along with this film, I'm sure. It, yes. you know, it singing just, along. It grabbed me in my soul and just, just you know, demanded that I sing along. So. I, I think it grabbed you right in your heart factory is my heart, really yes. where it grabbed you. It just, it fully peddled my heart factory is yeah. really what <laughs> And you want... You, <laughs> you watched the sing along version, right? You went to the theater. You went uh-huh, to the went theaters to the with theater. the bouncing ball. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, it was classic. RJ... How are you? I'm doing good. Anything um, you want to share? <laughs> um, I I've can in, cut it if you want me to share it. <laughs> I'm in. I am in some new medication. Let's say oh. that, and it's really teaching me how to uh, understand uh, my hunger cues. Let's say that. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, like today, we had like Mexican food, and I've been working with a nutritionist too because I was like, sometimes it's just I just love food. Like yeah. I'm just a big foodie. So like, that's my biggest thing going through this. Like I get full really fast now, Yeah. but then I see all the food that's remaining and I'm like, well, I can't just put this to waste. And he's like, well, you don't have to think about it. Like you have to finish everything all at once. And I think that's just me trying to, that's so embedded in me growing up. Like you always have to eat everything on the table. Oh, like, like finish your plate. Absolutely. Yeah. So do you know what I think finish you need, your plate, honey? Finish your brother's plate, finish your mom's <laughs> plate. Yeah. What do I, I think, need, honey? I think you should get a, a, beautiful set of Tupperware and we should just make that make it like part of it part of the process that's literally what he said today he was like well when you get something literally portion out what you're gonna eat it right now yeah and then what you'll eat like later it'll make you think I should be a nutritionist yeah I think you should Molly (laughs) career change career change change. (laughs) yeah Another PhD, another one. Thank you. Oh, another God, one. Thank no. you. <laughs> so yeah, I so right now I feel super bloated, but I have some mint tea uh, to yeah. help me. Um, oh, nice. Digest. 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 I still have you know a good three hours before I should I want to go to bed, so that mm. should be enough time. Yeah. Uh, well, this week. How about you, Adam? How are yeah, you? How's feeling? your health, Adam? How's your health? <laughs> My health's fine. Thank how's you your so head, much. Adam? <laughs> Only um, here. This week, I have the challenge to summarize the. The plot. I would say challenge is the keyword. And oh, I mean, do mean this challenge. is me now yeah. in a minute or less. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> and my time starts, starts Wait, now. now. The plot, such as it is, can be summed up thusly. Once upon a time, a luminous maiden named God Help Us artist, Jennifer Lopez, suffers a devastating heartbreak when her true love dies in a motorcycle accident. Side note, I did not realize he died. Uh, Emotionally shattered by the tragedy, she embarks on a tumultuous healing journey filled with toxic rebound relationships, a trio of failed marriages, and a little long-distance guidance from a celestial celebrity-filled zodiacal council. 
That's the plot that was written in a review that I have stolen. That okay, is all wait. you need to know. Okay, a review that you stole. So we don't know that he dies. This is, I'm assuming this is what this reviewer was given by the production company to because, review okay. upon. I mean, can we, are we going to jump to the end right away? But like, I, <laughs> I thought, can I say this about the ending? Yeah, yeah. say it. Okay. So, so we see the motorcycle crash at the beginning mm-hmm, and yes. at the end she sees Ben Affleck, which is, <laughs> we're going to talk about that decision. But anyway. <laughs> And then we like go back to a shot of her on the motorcycle. So I thought that Ben Affleck was the motorcycle guy. And it was about how he broke her heart and it caused all these problems. And then they like reunite and then they're like back on the motorcycle ride again because it's like, oh, we're starting again, baby. Was that not how you both? But does she learn? The but doesn't that doesn't that mean then she didn't learn her lesson, or is she going back to the motorcycle? A different. No, she did learn person. her lesson because she learned to love herself in between. And she so now really, she's ready to receive. She watched love of one another. episode of RuPaul's Drag Race, and she yeah. really took. And she and said, she "That's said, it. If you can't yeah. love yourself, how the hell are you going to love somebody else?" And so she is ready for love again with maybe the same guy, even because she's in a different place. That is her now. That is her now. Yes, but also I, I don't think it. She is very trying to do specifically a one to one, unless there's a okay. Very, then why cast Ben Affleck? That'd be my question. Oh, no, no, Jennifer Lopez. No, no, no. Why can't I cast Ben Affleck? I I think this is a film that is a myriad of. Co- Con conflict, like it's yeah. just there's nothing cohesive about Adam, this film Adam, anyway whatsoever. Truly, Adam ha- Adam's take on this whole movie was summed up in one sentence when we watched it. So I'll I'll wait till we. What wait. did I say? <laughs> oh, you remember it? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I'll repeat it later. Um, that's the plot. The plot is that she goes. She's a she's in love with being in love. She's in love with being, and in she love. has to learn how to love herself. Period. The end. Yeah, it is a cliche on a pastiche. Yeah, with a mil, a multi million dollar pastiche. Um, well, quickly, I think we all have the, us the same relationship to this musical. Um, neither of the three of us wanted to watch it, <laughs> so I think you know that really sums I it up. I am curious. I want everyone. Three of us. I want everyone's uh, relationship with Jennifer Lopez, though. Oh, okay. Well, I do want to say with this movie, I was not ever going to watch it except that Adam picked it for his birthday at a Mm -hmm. last minute swerve. But also, um, I thought the only thing I had seen about this movie was like an image of her on a couch. It was like it was like a a headline of an article and it was an image of her on a couch and then something about Ben Affleck being unsure about putting their relationship in the film. So I thought that it was going to be like a documentary about their life that was interspersed with her music. But Mm. then when somebody on our discord was like, I spit out my coffee when I heard the trailer or something, (laughs) then I went to watch the trailer and then I was like, hold on, this is not a documentary. (laughs) I wish somehow I hadn't done that because it would have been even better to go in expecting a documentary and then just get hit immediately (laughs) with like three layers deep of inception of like what exactly the plot Mm -hmm. is. Uh But um, it was, it was significantly different than what I thought it was going to be when I first encountered the idea of it. Experience mm-hmm. with JLo, she's stunning. She's amazing. I've always appreciated her, but mm-hmm. I feel it's more of a dancer than a singer. And I think that that's one potential issue with this film. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. RJ? Yeah. I mean, I was a big, like, JLo from the block era, Jennifer yeah. Lopez. Like, my sister had all Daddy of from her... the block. Excuse uh-huh. me. Okay. Yes. Like, yes. Jennifer. Jennifer. Jennifer from the neighborhood. Jennifer from the neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer yeah, from over so- there. <laughs> yeah, so I had like Jenny from the block. I'm real. Oh, like I'm all, real is a uh, top tier pop yeah. song. Uh. My love don't cost a thing. It's, mm-hmm. so, oh, it's good. so good. Like she just had these like late 90s into like the 20 like 2000s um just like hits. Yeah. That were so good. When did and Jennifer just, Lopez, <sighs> how old was she when like Jenny from the block came out? So she is born in 69. Which is wild, wild. to me, because um, she looks great. First of all, mm-hmm. oh my god, she looks amazing. Yeah, uh, except I think her makeup in this movie is very strange. But I can talk about that later. I think the makeup and the color choice of the whole movie this, in general. She, the she whole was born. Movie is wild. She was born in 1969. You said yes, mm-hmm. ma'am. Okay, it. Jennifer from Block came out in 2002, mm. so she was 33. So 30. The block came out. Wow. Yeah. And she wow. looked like she could have been like 20. Because she was like in her mid 20s when she did Selena. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Oh, I mean, that's the thing. Yes. Yeah, Selena was like a beloved movie in my house. Um, there was a movie called 
mi familia and she played like this migrant woman who like crosses the river with her two children it was so dramatic wow. i remember watching it in spanish one class and i was like oh my god that's j-lo uh so she has like a like even though and then obviously hustlers was kind of like her big like this is j-lo being cast as like someone in like her like true powers it almost feels like the character was like so perfect with just like what we know about j-lo and she just fits so well into it that i always appreciated j-lo as an actress like there was that movie where she there's a movie called i think a lot enough where she was um being stalked by like a like a for like an ex was and she had to Beyonce? like she had to well that beyonce also had that movie, uh like a being stalked by oh, a girl right. interested is. Beyonce in, also had a soccer movie, didn't she? Yes. But in enough, she was like being stalked by her ex. So she basically like self like trains self-defense and then like beats him in like a fight. That's like the ending of the movie. Yeah. Loved Made in Manhattan. I just I always felt like she was like Oh, she's a good rom com person. Is. It's not reflected in this, but she is good in a rom com. She obsessed, has obsessed, obsessed with the yes. name of Beyonce's film. Oh, oh yeah, I saw J Lo in I watched her Owen Wilson rom com like last year. Oh, Marry mm-hmm. Me? Yeah, yeah. It was like it was just like a, a whatever film, but like she was one of the best parts of it for sure. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think she has like star power like classic. Hollywood star power that like yeah. in today's context, it's like, yeah, I would watch you in like a very commercial film. And I know I'll have a good time because Jennifer Lopez is in it. Like, it, like yeah. there's that kind of oeuvre about her. So it's very, it's very interesting to see her go into her auteur expression. Yeah. I don't think you use oeuvre correctly, but otherwise I totally agree with everything Oof, you said. Uh, Oofa is like a body of work, isn't it's it? It's a body of work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking more like essence, maybe. Aura. Aura. Maybe. Aura. Yeah. 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 Um, it's funny to talk about it's funny to even discuss our relationship to Jennifer Lopez and talk about her career because this movie I think is trying to be like here's the real me and -hmm. it's not the career it's like my personal life but I also feel that this movie is deeply impersonal it doesn't go out of its way to like tell us anything we don't know other than like massive just like very general things that we already culturally know about the woman who's been in the cultural fabric for the last like 30 years of our lives. And like her relationship specifically. Yes. And also like what I was saying with like the layers of the movie, like if you want to get personal, you can't have this many metaphors stacked on it. Like like maybe, like maybe there is a way to do it obviously. And I wouldn't, I would rather see something where you're going for a metaphor than just like a documentary. But like it's, it's it's so stylized. I don't know how anyone could watch this and be like, I really feel like I saw a side of you that I've never seen or whatever. Absolutely like absolutely not. Right. Um, it's it's like a string of music videos, really, more than anything. I think. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. She tried to do Beyonce's Lemonade, but it's Agua Fresca, Look, but it's not I mean, even like good. From, this is this is the thing. Okay. Beyonce dropped the visual <laughs> album in 2014, fresh. and no one has mm-hmm. known how to top her since. No, truly. And no. this was J Lo's question mark. Could could I do something like this? And the answer is no. I need you to know that upon research for this, I read that someone at, I mean, who cares? Uh, It was like Entertainment Tonight or whatever was talking about this movie. Mm -hmm. And they were like, it's so different from what Taylor and Beyonce just did with their concert tour videos. This is like a real like narrative piece and like blah, blah, blah. She's really creating something new. And I was like, what? (laughs) What? Is, are we all collectively like our memories that short? We literally can't remember Lemonade, which was like the biggest thing to happen in music since the Beyonce self-titled dropped. Like what? Yeah. Anyway, it's very interesting. Um, but what's your relationship with JLo? Did you have any? I really, I like some of her movies. I would not say any of her rom-coms are my favorite rom-coms or any of her movies are my favorite movies. I love Selena. And I think she had a really great performance in Hustlers. But like overall, I've never been on the J-Lo train. Other Mm. than like, I think she's like a good, I I would, I think she would be good to see live as long as like her vocals were not live. I think that Mm. would be what I would need to ensure. She's a great performer. She puts on a show. Um what was the song she sang at the inauguration where at the end she added, uh, let's talk about this, some specific facts and figures about this movie. This is directed by Dave Myers. Okay. It's written by Jennifer Lopez as Matt Walton. Now it's funny here that it says that because later I saw that like Ben helped write it with Matt Walton and Chris Schaefer 
he has like story he should have like story credit i don't know it's very muddied and confused ben it being ben affleck ben affleck mm-hmm. yes yeah, sorry okay. story by jennifer lopez dave myers chris schaefer produced by nathan scherer scherer it stars jennifer lopez as the artist Ugh. stars fat joe as therapist kim petrus is virgo kiki palmer is scorpio <laughs> post malone is leo Sophia Vergara is Cancer. Jennifer Lewis is Gemini. Jay Shetty is Aries. Neil deGrasse Tyson is Taurus. Sandguru is Pisces. Derek Huff is husband number two. <laughs> Trevor Noah is Libra. And Ben Affleck is in this film in two roles. He plays Rex Stone, who is like a kind of a CNN Fox style head, yeah. Fox MSNBC news oh. guy. And he plays the biker. I didn't realize that he was prosthesis. He was a prosthetic. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Um, The weirdly in, you know how like on Wikipedia, which is always what I pull from, there's that like toolbar basically of the just facts and figures of the show Mm -hmm. or the movie, I should say. It does not include Jane Fonda as a star of this film in that list, which is oh my God. so weird to me. Two-time so Oscar weird. winner. Anyway, Jane, Jane Fonda plays Sagittarius. What's weirder is that when I was counting, there are only 10 Zodiac signs in this film, not 12. There is oh. no Aquarius and there is no Capricorn. <laughs> I thought somebody, I thought that I saw the Aquarius. I mean, not that I am, I am the least Zodiac girly, but like, <laughs> hold on. Jennifer. I'm going to continue while you look it up. Okay. Cinematography is by Scott Cunningham and is edited by Adam Petrovsky. Music is by Lenny Wee. Production companies, New Yorican Productions and Amazon MGM Studios and Freenjoy. This is distributed by Amazon Prime Video. Um, also, this is when RJ realized that Amazon has purchased MGM. Amazon owns MGM and he was horrified to find that out. <laughs> it was released on Amazon Prime on February 16th, 2024. Oh, you know they wanted that Valentine's Day drop. Oh, for sure. Uh, it's running time is 65 minutes. The country, uh, 65 minutes. And then as a, as an aside, this is entirely self-funded. There wow. are three projects that all came out at the same time. Regarding this, it's a multimedia venture for JLo. It's an album. It's this film. And it's a documentary called um the greatest the love greatest story love story never, never told. told even though we all fucking know what's going on in your lives you you two couldn't be less secretive if you fucking tried <laughs> um so in combination of all three of those the cost was 20 million dollars estimated wow oh. but of course because it's streaming we don't know what we don't know anything yeah. i can also, tell you it was oh. like in the it was in the top 10 of like 30 different countries on the day it was released hmm. on amazon prime okay um, Capricorn and Aquarius are in fact not Joan, confirmed by an article. So wow. I was wrong. I think I got. I think I was thinking Kim Petras was Aquarius for some reason. She's Virgo. She's Virgo. Um. Okay. Uh, I have a quote here from J Lo. Okay. And then I have uh, I have people who could have been in this movie but oh. said no. Okay. And then there's we'll like a gonna... clip on the documentary, famously of like people just listing names of like, they said, no, they said, no, this person said, no, this person said, no, as yeah. part of the, the, you know, the grind to get this movie made. Uh, yeah. Wait, so there is a documentary mm-hmm. about okay. the making of the film. The but you said that, that it was okay. making okay. of the film, but it's like about her and Ben. It's so, both. Maybe that was the thing. Maybe I saw that's what you were that thinking about. Yeah. Article headline. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so her quote is not that this, uh, is anything close to a romantic comedy. But those moments for me are the ones in life to, that show you how important it is to be able to laugh at yourself. You have to, because it's absurd sometimes the things that you find yourself in or that you go through. You think, I never thought I would be this person, end quote. Wait, 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 wait. What wait, is wait, the humor wait. of this film? I was about to say. She when, alleges that this is a very funny film. When was the laughter? There are there are like three. Oh. I will say every line Kiki Palmer has in this movie gold, gold. <laughs> Thank God she's in this that's, movie. That's true. Right off the bat, she's that's, the MVP of this. I film. told you we the should power do, of the performance. I told you we should do best and worst, and I was worried that this was going to be. We all were going to have the same answer, which is Kiki Palmer is best part of this movie. <laughs> um, I will also say that she is Scorpio, and I am a Scorpio. So yes, yeah, thank you, um, my sister. Uh, okay, so it is camp because she thinks it's funny. 
<laughs> right? So that's camp. That's 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 unintentional speaking. camp. No, but is it intentional? Because she thinks well, maybe it is it's intentional. Like, camp. She's like, I'm laughing at myself by making this. So you, so I am the, making it super serious. But okay, so you would have to take her at her word then that she thinks this is funny. You would have to say that she's a reliable narrator of her she's, own story. She's trying to communicate something by being quoted saying that about her own film, right? Like I, oh. I'm not saying she's a reliable narrator, but I'm saying like she wants me to think something about her saying that the film is funny. I think she, I li- okay. I are, I will say this. Before Do you think I watch that's this a movie, response? I don't know what that is. I don't know. I mean, that might as well be gibberish to me. <laughs> I will say this. I listened to the pop culture happy hour review of this before I even watched the film, which I technically should not have done, but it was on and I was like, well, I'm watching it anyway. Did you already well. know that you wanted to switch? No. Yes, this is oh, this okay. was a few days ago. This is when we went to see the apartment. Um, They bring up the fact that both Ben and Jennifer seem like people who do not have a sense of humor about themselves and are very quick to be very defensive about their mm. placement mm. in the cultural zeitgeist. Now I will say, I don't envy a person who has to go through, I know it's, it's yeah. not even interesting to say like, I don't envy a celebrity for having to like live their life in the tabloids, but I don't, it sounds horrible. It feels, yeah. it would probably feel crazy. We see Ben Affleck at a Dunkin' Donuts every day. There's always like, <sighs> like there's someone, there's a f- cameraman right outside their house. Like yeah. Yeah, this yeah. woman has been a, cultural staple of the american celebrity zeitgeist since like let's say 1998 like yeah for yeah. well well past 20 years mm-hmm. this yeah. woman has been in our lives why does I want she people feel to know the Adam need is fully arms crossed i'm <laughs> so mad why does she feel the need genuinely to there's something about this movie that feels like she's like well i have to cement my place in pop culture and it's like uh, sweetie it's you good. are did it. you're done yeah. you've you could coast for the you yeah. could never put out another thing and you're set i yeah. mean like i don't understand there's something so like you guys just don't really get it you don't get my whole thing but then she reveals her whole thing to be like platitudes and it's like yeah oh but i don't i don't think i want to know your whole thing if that's your <laughs> whole not, thing girl yeah when there's a line in this film, I feel like I've already jumped into the. I know. The I was review. like, we didn't yeah. really transition. Those. I'll come back to it really quick. But okay. there's a line in this film where she says, and it's in the trailer too. So you've all heard, you heard it last in the last episode <laughs> where she says, when I was asked what I wanted to be when I was little, I always said one thing in, in love. love that an AI wrote this movie. I refuse to believe anybody other than. No, zeros and ones put together what the script of this film because is it it is shocking it is shocking um we'll come back to that later here's the people who did not want to be in this okay justifiably so <laughs> taylor swift lizzo uh, jennifer coolidge jason momoa vanessa hudgens bad bad bunny ariana grande snoop dogg james corden anthony ramos and chloe kardashians do you know how bad this has to be for james corden to say no to this film <laughs> guys guys <laughs> that's it that's all the background info i have on this okay i was excited for this in that i knew i wasn't gonna have a lot to research so i was like oh okay, I can yeah, this out yeah. like a half hour it's a fun time let's get into it Who enjoyed this movie by a show of by a show of applause since it's a an auditory medium? <laughs> cool. <laughs> now that being said, I want to say this before I really go hard on this movie. Yeah. It's a huge swing. It's an yes, absolute, absolute miss. Absolutely. <laughs> it is such a spectacular fail. But why why not watch a swing? Why not watch I would someone again, earnestly try? I would rather watch this than some of the other things that we've watched that were just like mid for no reason. Like, A, Um, this is 65 minutes and 10 of those are credits. So that's got it going for it for sure. Now, I will say it's not great when you're 55 minute movie, we're 20 minutes in and I'm like, how much longer is there? Which I did do. I was like, oh, no. I mean, look, it's it's. By far not the worst thing that we've watched. I no. though, I mean, with the question that I raised of is it camp, mm-hmm. I was expecting to 
hate watch it a little bit more. I don't want listeners to get too excited of like, oh, I should definitely watch this because it sounds like a fun time to like watch to and hate. Yeah. hate. No. I don't think it actually accomplishes that either. No. Mm. Yeah. It's it's not it's not a fantastic little like swing and a miss. Like it's yeah. just like it, she's going for a lot. Which is commendable. I, I applaud her on that regard. And it is <laughs> forever. Co- it is cool that she self-funded it. I will give her yeah. that. I feel like this is wholly her artistic vision. The problem is, yeah. is that I think you have bad artistic vision. <laughs> like it's just it Adam, is, so there, is, is there is a review that I'm going to say that I'm going to read later that I agreed with on such a deep visceral level mm. that I was like, I almost need to read this entire review. But yeah. suffice to say, I think she is confused about where her strengths lie. Let's yeah. say that. This is what Adam said when we were watching it. He had to pause it to tell me this is as it this is like a one woman actress writes her and produces her own fringe show, but then the funding is like twenty million dollars. And like, it's that same energy of like, I'm really putting everything. I'm putting it all out there. All on the line. I'm really exposing myself. And I feel nothing has been exposed. I know less about Jennifer Lopez than I (laughs) knew walking into this movie. Oh no. It's such a fantastic, like, she, there's, she is, it's this like club classic Hollywood thing of big being surrounded by yes people. No one says no. No one like guides you on your vision and is like, let's put guardrails on this. I'm not, I'm not even saying like that's like wrong, but it's just, that's no, just what it that's is. That's just what that's it is. Just what that's, it is. And we're here to critique I, yeah. it. <laughs> I like having engaged in less of the media around it really genuinely didn't realize it was meant to be autobiographical when watching it. <laughs> Like oh, movie called This Is Me Now. <laughs> like I, love story. I I thought it was autobiographical in the way that most albums have something that reflects yeah, your life. Yeah, but yeah. I did not realize in any way that her aim was to like pull back the curtain and show us who she really is. <laughs> I just By thought that you. she had a bunch of pop songs she had written for her latest album, and then they were like, How do we make a plot to Let's string these all together? Yeah. That was what I that, thought this was. Because that I could get in on that of like, oh, it's like an, an artist making like a music movie, you know? Yeah, that's like, what I thought was, yeah, a music yeah. movie. Yeah. <laughs> no. Would that and it, it was. was a very and it was a very, as you said, like it was a very platitude type of plot about like, oh, it's yes. about how you gotta learn to love yourself. And yeah, yeah, we all know this. And so, you know, a pretty basic plot to throw in there to put your album. And together. pretty basic, like obviously, we're not saying that like it's a basic lesson to love yourself. So it should be easy or whatever. Like that's, that's a hard journey for a lot of people. It's a hard journey for a lot of people. I don't want to hear that you recently did it as a 50, whatever year old woman. I'm so sorry. And maybe that makes me ageist, but I don't, I, that is something you do in your twenties and thirties where you find yourself. I don't want to hear you at 55 being like, and then I learned I had to love myself. Mama, th- it's not 20, 2016, honey. We're not doing like therapy just blew up. We're not doing like everyone's on betterhelp.com. So girl. you're saying this is like a little too, like if she released this at 2014, 2015. I would be gooped and gagged yeah. because I would also be 22 years old and be like, wow, Mama, she, Mama, ate, she ate that And tiny. I'm in you know, Queen Tings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I remember when Adam talked like that. Um, I it was obnoxious for a while. Yeah, it was yeah. obnoxious. Um, Adam, I want to I want to dive a little deeper into this. What is it that makes you uncomfortable about a fifty year old woman having yeah. a plot about discovering self love recently? Yeah, let's lean in on that. Um, that I don't think it's terribly interesting to be quite quite frank. Oh, for someone, so you just find women to be disposable when they hit middle age. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. 100%. I, I That's why wonder, I have a movie musical podcast, in fact, where we never talk about women in their middle age. <laughs> okay, I, I want to throw something out there and just see how it sits with you. Okay? Mm-hmm. Is it because you don't like the notion that it, in your 50s you could still be struggling with self-love? No, I think it would be interesting if it wasn't Jennifer Lopez who has like millions of dollars telling me that she just recently found this out. I'm not saying that rich people can't have struggles, but okay. it can't be like I didn't I've had like really bad love lives with really hot guys. Sorry, I had to I can't not ignore that. And then also like be like, but really at the end of the day, I married A-Rod because I didn't love myself. Mama, 
I don't want to hear it. Nobody wants to hear it. If Liz, Ta- like we want the Liz Taylor, marry seven people and never talk about it. Like just like mm. take photos together. And then like, I don't, I want to imagine what's going on. Yeah. I don't want to learn that you were like, and really it was a process of discovering myself. That's very boring. This point of celebrity is that it's supposed to be like, I'm allowed to imagine a world around you. Like I know just yeah. enough to like quench my thirst. And then I get to go home and like make fantasies. I don't want to know what you discuss with your therapist, girl. I don't want to know that. That's not interesting to me. There needs to be a remove. We need to go back to where there was like, we didn't know everybody's business. Yes. And that's it's, why I, wait, wait, that, I, I got to okay, pause go you, ahead, RJ, because I have to say this was a really great argument and it was a deflection from the actual question that I asked because you now made your argument. It's a, now you made your argument about why you're unsympathetic because she's a celebrity and not because of her age, which is actually what you started with. Oh, but I mean, it's all it's all it was. But it was a good explanation of not caring about the celebrity. So I just want to I just want to, again, challenge you to think about the age thing. But you don't have to answer. Yeah, right maybe now. don't lead with like, okay. I don't care that she's a 50 year old woman finding (laughs) self-love um but i don't and i feel very strongly but if we were watching okay but if we were watching like a a move like a past lives you know like a but it's not like like i I can't look at this movie and separate like jennifer lopez is a 50 like i can't be like imagine this movie but it's just a generic 50 year old woman like it's like about she made it about her like it's like all intertwined i can't like separate out and just plop in like Jane Doe from, you know, the grocery store down the street and be like, how would I feel watching? I think fine. But it seems like you're coming from a, a place of judgment about the 50 year old part because you think she should have figured it out by now. And I'm saying, like, do you think you have everything figured out, Adam? No, but I also have never wanted to make a twenty million dollar movie about how I don't have everything figured I mean, that's out either. Fair. We, we all have that part figured out. So that's not a good idea. <laughs> But I think that I think that the discomfort of watching older people wrestle with really fundamental things like this is often because we like to believe that like, OK, like I'm, I'm, I got a little bit more cooking to do and then I'll kind of get it down. And then like I won't have to struggle with stuff like this anymore. But like that's probably not true. I mm, I think I would be more interested if it felt a real if it yeah. felt like I really was learning something new and interesting about her and B, it wasn't something that I just feel like I'm not saying that you can't, that takes a long time to learn. That's totally understandable. There's something about it that just feels like she didn't, this movie felt like we were trucking along about being like, she's like coming to terms with like the fact that she's been all these failed relationships, blah, blah, blah. And then they didn't know how to wrap it up. So they were like, well, we we should just make the end that she loves herself. But I don't know if that's like how Jennifer Lopez feels. Uh, okay. Do you know what I mean? Yes. There's something, and there's something so false about this whole movie. Yeah. That like, yeah. I can't tell like, and that's the thing is like, I think you're supposed to, I think the point is that you walk away and be like, wow, I really, I really get her now. And I definitely feel like I get I get the version she wants people to. I think she, I, she's mythologized herself yeah. very well. Yeah, for sure. But the thing of her still saying like it's so I, as I watched this, it was so nice to laugh at myself. And I think that's important that we can all look at ourselves, see what we've gone through and can be like, wow, that was pretty. That was crazy of me to think that I don't get that at all. Like I felt like she earnestly tried to be like, I want to show this journey, this self-discovery that I have, but it's like, because it's so buried in CGI to the point where like her house is fully CGI that I'm like, this house what is was the insane. <gasps> yeah. What was the, the house? Point? The house is like <laughs> Minecraft. Like it's all just squares. I'm sure Jennifer Lopez has an insane house, but I can't imagine that it's I can't the imagine it's more insane better. than the CGI has. Like, yeah. like why a question why that I have is like, shoot why in her house? and like, why have <laughs> me try to empathize with this main character by putting her in the most ostentatious. Oh, uh-huh. I mean, there's uh, like not austere because it's like luxurious, but it's like, what's the word that I want? Like, it feels like it's just a huge empty space that she's just yeah. this tiny person navigating. Like, I, I don't know what, 
what was the tro- like why would that make me like this character more or <laughs> see myself know. in uh-huh. her or whatever like that was it was the most alienating decision of they were like and you know what would be great with this like every woman story about like learning to love yourself would be like if her house was just insane like, insane why yeah yeah <sighs> I, uh, I do know. think there's like I think when you were trying to get a like if that's the real story she wants to tell I do think by like doing this whole it's not me it's the artist and like all there are no named names everyone's like an archetype like okay I get you're trying to abstract everything so that way we really just focus on the lesson but it just it's there's so much it's too thought out that yeah. it really and that's why I make the fringe like the one person show fringe thing it's because it's like when you're making a one person show for fringe it's like I I'm doing this for twenty dollars and it's like a time and a place where I can be like super raw and vulnerable and just like like really tell my story on stage which I think that's what she was trying to do and achieve and like writing the script I'm like this is me expressing how vulnerable it is and how scary it is to like have to go through all of these relationships. But then I never actually found the time to love myself, but because she does it through Amazon's power and resources, it just by default feels like, well, it, I, I'm not getting through that, but then I'm like, well, is that just, can I fault an, an, this celebrity's person, if that's her toolbox, if that's like, if this is her box of crayons, which is Amazon and $20 million in CGI, then it's like, well, then I guess I can appreciate that she's expressing herself, but I don't know. It just feels so look at me that I, I genuinely think she's not, I don't know. I don't know. It's, I agree with Adam that it is hard to kind of take her celebrityness away from yeah. what I think she's trying to be very vulnerable and artistic with this piece. <laughs> I mean, maybe she is so disconnected from how regular people live that like. Which I believe that. I mean, it didn't occur to her, the things that she was layering in here that were very not relatable to the rest of us. Yeah. I'm thinking a lot about this. I basically didn't listen to a single word you said, so I do Um, apologize. But I really, I think I'm trying. I'm I'm, okay. (laughs) I think what it is, is that. This movie is like, I learned to love myself, blah, blah, blah. And yet for some reason, because of how, I don't even, I don't even know if I could put my finger on it. She feels so insecure that it feels like she had to make all of the, there's so much extraness about it to like make up for the fact of like that it's so underbaked. Well, that's why I'm like, are you really insecure? Are you just so insecure that you like can't? be vulnerable because it's too scary but then like why did you do this okay but here's my real theory about why this movie does not work the music is simply not strong enough to support it absolutely not absolutely not so in terms of you said earlier like knowing her strengths and her insecurity like she if she believes that the the music written for this album is strong enough to be supported by these visuals like she is sorely mistaken it is a mid album at best it's so mid i mean unfortunately jennifer lopez we were looking back rj and i we were like when's the last time she released a really good song and it was like 2011 yeah it was get on the floor with pitbull yeah so like yeah that was a bop but it's been like 10, 12 13 13 years. years since then i think she's trying to do a big like comeback album and i understand why she went for a, a big swing like this with the movie for something that's a comeback album but it's I don't know if she's got it in her anymore. I don't know. Well, it's interesting because I mean it's like a fascinating thing of like she gets back with Ben after yeah. 20 years. Mm-hmm. In 2002 she releases the album This Is Me Then, which is like oh. what she re- mm-hmm, which is I what she released. This. Okay. When like she met Ben, that was like the album she came out with around that time. So now it feels like she's like, "Well, I have to bookend it." But like, yeah, you so, don't. So this you mo- don't have- wait. So then maybe Molly, you are right. This movie sh- should be more about Ben, but maybe all the Ben stuff has been cut out of the movie movie that it does feel like I'm missing like a half of the movie. Like I'm missing a. Well, because yeah. do you know what's really interesting? What happened with the motorcycle guy? Right. And they just refused to tell you. 
Yeah. Like she just is like, well, I had that one big heartbreak and now that set me up for all of this. And like a, a good movie, when we get to all, when we're doing all of the unpacking and therapy, it would culminate in her unpacking what happened with the heartbreak that set her mm-hmm. on this path. Right. But um, they're too afraid to tell us what happened with Motorcycle Guy. And I think we know why. And I think we know why, because it's probably the real part of it's that's the actual the part thing. that we yeah. want to know. <laughs> that's the thing that we want to know and that she doesn't want to tell us, especially now that they're back together. So, yeah. Yeah. Should we listen to any of these or are we good? I guess. Hearts um, and flowers. We can do hearts and flowers, which is the the okay. song in the in the heart factory. In the heart, the heart factory, where heart factory ought to be. Uh, can't get enough, which is the wedding montage song. Um, I play a little hearts and flowers because I want the girls to get in on this steampunk fantasy. Wounded soldier, load is closer. Diamonds from pressure, time is precious. Blessings can blossom from a broken child. Cold in the desert, but the sun will rise. You don't see the tears, I'm still all smiles. Put it on my back, cause I'm built for the miles. Make it through the rain, through the trauma and the pain. For the love and not the fame. That could have been on, I don't know what it was called, but like whatever album Jenny from the Block is on, probably that song could have been on it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a very throwback. It's very throwback. And that's great, right? But like if if what you're doing is like a throwback album of like, here's a sound you we all know that you love from me, can't be supported by this kind of movie. Like it's it's just not it's not the kind of artistic output that demands something like that. And she just hasn't grown as an artist in a way that she hasn't for something like this. I mean, the lyrics are so basic yeah. like not even basic for because you know like sometimes like it can be like twee for like theatrical lyrics but like sure. here they're like so like you, yeah um i almost wish that if this was like kind of like an anthology of like the years through jennifer lopez oh, if yeah. she just took out all of the the cgi and the metaphors and really just been like okay if you want to be the artist but then it starts from like a very early 2000s place and then ends in like now i think that would be cool if like each song was representative to like a specific decade of like oh do you mean sort of like i don't know like a tour of eras in some way maybe <laughs> maybe an artist who's recently done something related to the various something eras of their, of their li- yeah yeah no yeah, I don't, something like that yeah something like that mm. Yeah, maybe that would be a good idea for somebody to do. Oh, I hope somebody does yeah. that for sure. Yeah. I really, yeah. I I hope Beyonce does that soon. Yeah, that'd be good if Beyonce did that. <laughs> um, yeah, that I almost wish like maybe just do it more like it's you, and yeah. not this weird artist character in like a made up world. That uh, it just feels <laughs> like it's a movie. Like the reason. One of the big reasons why Lemonade, and this is like clearly what this is like trying to evoke to some degree is Lemonade. Mm -hmm. The reason why Lemonade, one of the reasons why Lemonade was so interesting is because we know so little about Beyonce Mm -hmm. as a regular person. We, everything around her is completely shrouded in mystery. So for her to come out, drop an album out of nowhere and then in it, that's how we learn that like Jay-Z cheated on her. Right. Like that's what's like, and we don't even really get a lot past that. It's more about like that album is like that reveal. And then how do you kind of cope with that? Yeah. Yeah. It's her very definitively telling us I have healed already from him cheating on me. So don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. This, this is how I did it. (laughs) Yeah. And so that's like interesting. That's something that has a point of view. And I think Beyonce, especially like since specifically since like I am Sasha Fierce is an artist who is, always insisted on, I feel like topping herself and trying to like explore new avenues with what she outputs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jennifer Lopez has never felt that way, but we don't need her to. This is the thing is like, Mm -hmm. no one has ever asked for this from her. There's always been like the conversation that like, she is not a great singer 
And there will always be the conversation about the fact that she's not a great singer. But there's always been a conversation around the fact that Taylor Swift has never been a great singer. She's gotten yeah. better over the years, but she's never, that is not her lane. Taylor Swift's yeah. lane is like, she's a great singer songwriter. She's really good right. at like capturing a feeling. She's a good like stand in for a lot of like young women, blah, 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 blah. Right. Jennifer Lopez has always been like party, like yes. New York, Latina. Let's get loud. Yes. Like, let's, that's the song. That's what she's saying at the end of, yes. at the end of the, the inauguration. inauguration. Let's get loud. Let's get loud. Oh, yeah. Which is like truly one of her best songs. Yeah. Incredible. Like, yeah. But like, we, we didn't, no one, why do you feel the need to put this out? I mean, it just like, it feels so incredibly insecure. And now that I feel like I've made that realization, I feel like it's all I'm going to harp on the rest of this episode. It's just like, yeah. Are you that unsure with your own status that you like feel that you won't be, you're not being taken seriously to some degree and like, but girl mama, you never will be like, there are a lot of people that are never going to be taken seriously, but that doesn't make, that doesn't devalue them in any way. We have kind of an uncomplicated relationship with her. And I think that that's what (laughs) we want to continue to have. We don't need to complicate things. We already know what, what, what you're giving. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we love you. Like, that's why we like these things about you. So like, yeah. I do want to say a little a little Just compliment a sandwich or whatever. Okay. Yes, please. Um, I don't know if we started with something good, but um, to what you said, RJ, about the dancing, the best part about this number was definitely the dancing. Oh, and absolutely. I, even, I was watching it thinking about us doing 42nd Street with Brandon and it being absolutely a terrible choice for a dance <laughs> we movie. Have done this. But this really would have been a better choice. <laughs> This is this is a real modern dance piece at the end of the now, day. Does it stress me the hell out that there's like a conveyor belt with these pedals that she dances on and we see it leading to like a fiery furnace? Yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. I don't know why they kept having her on this conveyor belt. It seems like really not the place for me to be able to sink into the song if I see her heading actively towards fire. But other than that, what's well, another metaphor? I don't think it was. I think they just wanted her on the conveyor belt. They just wanted levels. It was just for levels. Um, <laughs> otherwise, here's, here's another great. nice thing I'll say. I love yeah. the way this movie started with the like Puerto Did Rican you? folklore about okay. the like the girl yeah, and the see, hummingbird. I thought that was going to be the movie. Taino. I was like, okay, so if you're you're telling me this folklore to kind of like show that this is going to be a metaphor. It's like a fable. Yeah. Cause she calls it, this is me now a love story. So I'm like, okay, so we're going to like abstract. She just, we went she just to- <laughs> took it from the beginning of the second season of Fleabag. So this mm, is a love weirdly, story. Moment. Weirdly mm-hmm. like, and find the love story is like, you fall in love with yourself, fine, whatever. Yeah. But like, why would you start it with a story that's about two regular, like star cross lovers? Why is that where you started then? Because that's where you... Because I think now... Okay, mm-hmm. my conspiracy theory now, it is that it was supposed to be the star-crossed lovers of her and Motorcycle Man, and they had to cut everything out about him. You think so? Oh, I think... Okay, <laughs> I'm going to do the thing where I give the movie a lot more credit than you guys are going to think it deserves. But I think that the point of the hummingbird and flower story is that she thinks she's the flower, and then she realizes at the end that she's the hummingbird. She's the hummingbird. That's why when she's at Burning Man or whatever, she sees a bunch of... <laughs> She's she's like, a bunch of birds yes. in the sky because it's her realizing that she's been misunderstanding the myth the whole time thinking she was the flower and right. she's waiting for the love to find her but she's been the one searching for the love when she goes um, to that wedding in that in the desert planet in dune 2 yes uh-huh. yes mm-hmm. she does dune. when she does dune, she, she does realizes dune. that she's yeah. having birth. i okay i would like the way that the movie started with that myth if that if it was a single layer of metaphor and that was where we started. And then we went into the the sort of real world-ish yeah. one, right? No, we don't go to the factory, even my dear RJ. We do <laughs> we do the we do the Puerto Rican myth storybook. Uh-huh. Then we do the motorcycle. Then uh-huh. we do the heart factory. And that's where uh-huh. I was like, too many layers, girl. Yeah, too many layers. Already. What is happening? What is occurring? It was a bit of a first 15 minutes of Moulin Rouge moment where I was like, how oh, yeah. grounded in a story do I need to be? Because I yeah. don't know what's happening right now. Yeah. The motorcycle was so crazy because immediately I'm like, oh, this is like a metaphor. It's like metaphorical that you are on this relationship that like crashed and burned. But when you said, when you said that the motorcycle man died and she's trying to recover from that accident, I'm like, oh, that was real. Ma'am, yeah, I, 
Well, that was shocking to me as well. She does wake up in a hospital, doesn't she? I <laughs> guess that, that was the plot. Because the motorcycle was driving on like a, lo- a liminal purple watery yeah. p- oasis. I mean, like, it looks <laughs> super dangerous. I understand why they got into an accident. The hydroplaning, you know, you shouldn't be going that fast is, is and obvious. wet, wet yeah. gravel. Oof. Boy, is this bad. I will give how you, one. How are you doing, Adam? How are you feeling about your birthday? I will give one. I'll give one good number. I did. Okay. I did like the wedding number. I thought it was yeah. the yes. most fun in the whole yes. movie because it shows kind of like it's kind of like when you watch like the scenes where people like get lost in like drugs and sex and alcohol, the quote unquote vice that they're trying to like get away from. And so it's fun to see it in like, oh, yeah, the thrill of being surrounded by people who are celebrating you being so in love in a wedding, like you could get addicted to that. And that's like, Oh, that's fun. I I think that this is the best song on the album. Honestly, I think is part Mm -hmm. of it. Um, I want to say just one really quick, super bitchy thing, which is that the, the dress that she wears in the actual ceremony, that's got the heart (gasps) cut out. Yes. Why? uh, Horrendous. Horrendous. So horrendous. It's so tacky. And it is the worst cut for the kind of dancing she's doing. Yeah. Cause it's like supposed to be fitting her really really like tight with like sheer it's like a figure skater sheer thing yeah. Like Panel, stomach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. but like she's like bending over in she's a hip hop the it's whole time so it's like folding. all bunch it's, so, it's just it's it's not I'm not even being betty it's just the costume designer and the choreographer needed to have a conversation is the thing that makes me mad about it but I like I the reception dress that like short one dress, yes great. Like, absolutely should have been wearing that the whole time absolutely. I think that I think the concept of this number where it's just we're just quickly flashing between the three different grooms to show how it's like, she just does the exact same thing Mm -hmm. three times over. Brilliant. Amazing. Good visual storytelling. storytelling. All the other numbers could have learned something about the idea (laughs) of telling the story through a visual. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agreed. I hate the friend. I get Uh, that they're supposed to be the moments of levity in this film, but they were just so artificial. Boy, you it's supposed I thought it felt like was it isn't it supposed to be that like this is like where she starts like devolve like the first time we meet her friends, her friends are already like, wow, she sucks. Like that's where you get to when they're like they do the intervention. Why do we start there with her friends? Immediately off the bat, I was like, Oh, so you just have bad friends. Yeah, I guess if you think about it too hard, like I, I thought the comments were funny, but you're right that like obviously if I had a wedding and my friends were talking like this at it, I, they would be pretty bad friends. It's just weird um, because if they like over the course of the song, that's when they like once they start oh, bringing yeah. in the other grooms, realize, then they start okay, having the comments. Again. Then yeah. that's fine. But like it's weird that they started it, and I was like, oh, okay. But I, I guess, guess they already had the yeah. song about the abusive boyfriend, so. Well, I mean, that was, ugh, we should talk about that. Um, I don't want to, but we should. Uh, I guess maybe that's kind of the trouble of like, it's like not really a fixed moment in time. Is like maybe like which wedding is this necessarily when they first start making the comments? Yeah, but but it would have been better. You're right. If they had made that clear of like the comments are coming after she's at least been married one time so that it's not mm-hmm. like, oh, we immediately believe that she can't find somebody. Yeah. 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 This, these are also the best the best colors that they've used in the entire movie. The pink and oh, white. Oh, yeah. The, the colors because the are rest really of the movie has this like weird, toppy, beigey. Amber. Yeah. Everything is amber, amber. in this Dusty. Film. Like, what? Why? It's just because it's CGI Mad blue. Black color, yeah. color the reason, color, the yeah. reason this scene works so well is because it's filmed in a real place. Yeah. <laughs> Everything in this set is real. Well, probably not the decorations, but most of the actual space is real. Yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, that's fun. 
you know, that's a this song is like the fun J Lo song Bop. Like you, she makes music to dance. To. I don't, I don't like, think the chorus is great. To be quite honest, I like like the pre-chorus yeah. and the verses mm-hmm. more than I actually like the hook. But were you yeah. the one that was saying like this is so K-pop? Which song did you were like this is very K-pop? Which oh, was, was it Hearts and Flowers? I don't remember. It was one song where like it, they speak sing. She spoke sung part of it, and I don't remember which one it was. Um. Okay. There was that song in the like uh, Love Addicts Anonymous or whatever. Broken mm-hmm. Like Me. Broken Like Me, where she, it's like this very emotional sh- song that she's singing, and then one of the one of the oh, people in the in starts dancing, starts just like starts getting up and starts dancing, and Adams. Adam, oh, this is what you were talking yes, about. Yes, Adam had a guttural reaction as soon as it happened. Adam goes, "Oh no." <laughs> Like, it's the first so time real. it's the first time we have been watching a musical where someone broke out into dance and I went, oh no. Oh no. Oh god. <laughs> That's no. really funny. Mostly because um, I think everything is played at the same level. Like all the songs yeah. are kind of at the same tone. I think the Broken Like Me one should have just been like a ballad that she sings. Listen, this is again yeah. like I think she's like, I know I'm not a great singer. So right. I have to perform it, but it's to like, the dance. yeah, but this is <laughs> but the so point, yeah. wild to me. This is the song where you're supposed to like be raw and vulnerable and be like, I am broken. I have problems, blah, 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 blah. But like, then yeah. she does. And I'm not even saying you can't get to, there's not an artistic value in like modern dance or anything. That's obviously not what I'm saying. It's been a modern dance movie and all the music was non diegetic I just think she should yeah. have made this film. Oh, pff, sorry. I mean, what does it mean for music to be diegetic also in this kind of a setting? But oh, um, true. <laughs> the, the reality is so surreal. Yeah, the reality is so blurred. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I want to say also with this number that um, there's a line after it, which I thought was going to be the line that you were going to make fun of earlier in the podcast, which mm-hmm. was when the guy says something about not getting you. And then she says, I don't even get me. I oh. will say... It bothered me less in context than it did in the trailer. When I heard it in the trailer, I thought, oh, no. I, ha- I oh, had no. the reaction that had him into oh, the no. dance again. Oh, no. um, I was truly, truly taken aback by it. But um, there, are, there are some real cliche lines. There are some lines yeah. in this where you know what the next line is well, going to be. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. That's the whole platitude-ness about it. Yes. I told Adam, I was like, every line feels like someone will write it on Canva and then make it an Instagram post. Yeah. It's like reminder, mental oh. health reminder today to be good to yourself. And then it's this yeah. quote from Sometimes this Sometimes you won't even get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, <laughs> I think really. Yeah, sure, beautiful sure. sunset. Yeah. I think really this, this broken like me is really where we start to take a turn for the worse in terms of you realize that this she's is where trying. the turn for the worst. No, is. I really think because before that is the wedding and it's like fun still. Right. And this is where it's like, Oh, she's trying to do something deep, but like she has nothing she to did, reach down into. The well is so <laughs> shallow. The well shallow. is shallow. <laughs> she's going in opposite direction from Casey Musgraves right now. And so <laughs> I just think, yeah, it's, it's too bad that remember. she thought she was doing something. I don't it. remember what those three songs are. To be yours, mad in love, and not going anywhere. But I don't know if that might be part of the album and not in the. This movie. is no. This is in the order of appearance. Oh, yeah, girl. I didn't realize there were. There's three, three songs, songs between between the, 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 between the wedding and this, and I couldn't. There are. I couldn't <laughs> tell you. I have no clue. One of them is the one where she. One of the okay, so in between the wedding and this, yeah. her friends tell her she's a sex addict. Uh-huh. Yeah. She, there's a classic intervention scene. Uh, and then her therapist, Fat Joe, he fires her as a client. It's like, why don't you go here? Because instead? his wife doesn't like her, which I thought was like a really weird. Anyway. Um, and then there's that song that she sings like while she's burning the paper or something like that. Uh, like in the fire. Is that after? I didn't I even remember before. that there was a song during that scene. I think that's after. I think that's. I think it's before because I think that's the that's when she makes the decision that she has to go to uh, therapy. I remember the scenes in between the songs, but I do not remember the songs, and that bodes ill for a movie movie musical. <laughs> go with an album. Uh-huh. I mean, it's tough. This is a fifty-five minute film, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are twelve songs in this movie. Yeah, I mean, it is a visual album, so 
it's going to be song heavy, obviously, but I should remember. But still, yeah, but there was still yeah. so much dialogue, way more dialogue than I wanted. Yeah. Because the dialogue was just so wrought that I was like, oh, I didn't need to hear that. I just, I can get, I get that vibe. I di- get the therapist is mad. I get that the friends don't like her. I don't need to hear the words like, you've really come a long way. You are a sex addict. You don't know what it's like to be in love. You're addicted. I, I don't know. Do you, remember, do you remember those sketches that they would do on Saturday Night Live and it was like, like the teens in the in the drama club. Yes. That's what this movie is. Yes, very fringe, very fringe just show. Very just like yeah. rough student, draft energy. Student written, material. student written material. Also, she's not a sex addict, right? No. no. Okay. So that's why it's so weird that they said that because they yes. really were trying to say love addict. Yeah, but uh, yeah, or like you also, self-regulate through limerence was yes. really what they were trying to say but i guess you what sorry that jennifer Lopez has done less research on mental health than i have limerence <laughs> is like is like obsessive crush of where you like see the other person is perfect like and a, a, like a stage Ooh. before you've even really been in a relationship with them mm. Mm. limerence limerence look it up everyone l-i-m l-i-m E R A N C O C E N C. A state of involuntary obsession with another person. The experience of limerence is different from love or lust in that it is based on the uncertainty that the, that the person you desire, called the limerent object, is in the literature also desired. Oh, that's to. just being you know delusional for a K-pop, K-pop idol. idol girl. That's yeah, girl. That, that's my we, daily life. That is weird. Uh, honey, yeah, call me yeah, limerent. Yeah, limerent. <laughs> <laughs> Limerization, bitch. Um, yeah. What <laughs> do we even? I don't think we actually need to listen to Broken Like Me. To be quite honest, I didn't. I don't remember the song in any way whatsoever. I do think we should probably listen to Hummingbird. Okay. Because that's the clear musical theater reference that she's going yeah. for because it's the ode to singing in the rain. Yes. Tell me how your day was so I can make it better. The way you make me better. Hold you up through any weather. And with every lesson. It's not perfection You'll never have to question Ain't you no know, yes in my intention Baby, I know it gets hard sometimes I just wanna be the wings to help you fly Cause you help me be the best version of me And all I wanna do is help you be the best version The songs are just perfectly fine. They're perfectly fine. You're probably listening to this listener and you're thinking, I'm enjoying this. Why are they going so hard on this? Yeah. But I want you to imagine that this is the grand finale of a musical. (laughs) Yes. And then I want you to reevaluate whether or not you're enjoying it. Yeah. There's something like, why? Also, I'm sorry. This was maybe the thing that made me the most mad of this whole movie. <laughs> this woman lives in, as we've covered, the most insane house I've ever seen. And then she leaves her therapy appointment and her therapist offers her a ride because it's raining, which seems inappropriate to me, but whatever. And then she says, no, I think I'll take the bus. Ma'am, you do not take buses. I've seen your house. You have not been on a bus mm-hmm. in many years. You cannot convince me. There is there is truly nothing you could do to convince me that this character would take a bus. But to kind of be like, to specify that like, no, I'll take the bus. That's what I was like. You, uh, uh, this uh, well, it's just supposed to be like she's connecting back. Like it's because it comes after the she's connected to her home, or like having that dream about having going the back dream home. about going back Adam, to the. When was the Bronx. last time you took a bus? Well, I live in a city where people take buses. So, and when even then, I the think bus? the last time we took the bus like was a like few months ago. A few months ago, yeah. Okay. For oh, February. Have- yeah. And you have a lot less money than Jennifer Lopez has in this movie. It's all in <laughs> oh, yes. oh, yes. But yeah. we've but we've hit a point in our lives where we'll probably Uber if we need to get somewhere in the rain. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like oh, yeah. I, <laughs> specifically I don't in have the rain. Jennifer Lopez house, but like I'll go ahead and call a lift if it's bad weather. I, I don't need to take a bus anymore. So like I yeah. just have I get I guess it's a metaphor and I get that she has to be on the street when it's raining because it's singing in the rain metaphor. But like yeah. find another way for her to be out in the rain, please. Or just 
don't do a scene. Why are you doing a scene? It's so bizarre because to me. Also, I, I'm sorry. Do I have to, I have to on the bus one more moment. Because <laughs> <laughs> also, she doesn't live in a neighborhood that the bus goes to. No, I'm there sorry. is no that route. No, where a bus route goes. No, she has a bus up right outside her house, Molly. They just didn't show it, but she's got a whole wow. stop. Yeah, they forgot wow. to CGI the bus stop. <laughs> the, CGI the, bus stop. <laughs> the thing that made us most upset was the CGI in the house. It was when the friend was going to invite her to her home or to her wedding, to his wedding, and he yeah, she like answers. I know. <laughs> she answers the door, and she's standing by the door, and the door is CGI. The outside is everything, CGI. The everything whole is CGI. scene is CGI. So you just see them be so fuzzy around like this giant mansion and the quote unquote like LA like sky that I was like what's what's the point of doing all of this and that when you could have just shot at someone's it was so bizarre because I was like why this is such a an excessive use of resources it's also, yeah. I also have always and I maybe I don't I'm not in the Jennifer Lopez lore enough but I've always like felt weird about I I have total respect that she like grew up in the Bronx blah 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 blah, blah whatever Jenny from the block she has never felt like she is like, but I'm a true New York artist at my core. You know what I mean? Like yeah. she is like, she lives in, she lives in LA. She loves LA. It's fine. It's just so weird to me that she loves to do this thing of like going back and being like, but really those like seven years I spent in New York. I don't know. <laughs> It's just so funny also, to like, me. Wait, so was the therapist also from New York? Because they're in LA, right? And then she's yes. talking about her old neighborhood and she references a specific yes. business or whatever. And, and he's, he's like, like yeah, I know. I know. I know. Yeah. But like, why would he know? Is he I also think that's grew up just... in her neighborhood in New York and then he also moved to LA and became her therapist? Like, what's going on? I think that's it's a line. So that's like bizarre. a poking meta line because it's like, this is, you know, Fat Joe and yeah. go way back. I think that's just like a. Okay, it is not yeah. textual. It is like me- meant to be meta. Just the idea I- of somebody being like, you know, that one bodega in New York, and then just being like, yes, of course, yes, I know the of one course. bodega in New York. No, you, you know don't, girl. Yeah. But also, like in this movie, let's take one thing off. Let's not add meta to it as well. <laughs> <laughs> Before you leave the house, take one thing off, girl. My God. And Before you one, leave the house, full add metaphor. one more meta layer to your movie. Yes. <laughs> Can I? If if the thing that RJ wanted to bring up was me reacting to the dance, I'll say that RJ freaked out when he realized that the little girl was lip syncing the song <laughs> along with her. <laughs> he was like, no, no, no I can't. It was so Please don't. I was like, she's mouthing the words because she's also, that's her. That's, that's, her. Her. that's her. It's her then. It's her then. And this is her. This is her now. Now. That was the now. thing when, when they were doing the dream and she was like, I felt this presence follow me. And then I felt it and I turned around and the therapist goes, who was it? I said while watching it, it was me. And she says, it, it was, was me. me. <laughs> I was well, like, I, I, I feel God. sure that. I don't yeah, know. This, I'm 180 I mean, on this. I think this is cinema. This it is was, a chat yeah. GPT of like, what's the most likely thing? Anyone can be watching it's this. It's Occam's and then could Razor posit, for sure. You any moment and say, what do you think is the most likely next line to happen? And they would yes. get it correct. Yeah, they would yeah, get yeah. it. It does yeah. feel like chat GPT script, but then also like, AI blender like entered the thing and it created that mansion for them to then green screen. Oh yeah, full AI art Uh for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Wonk Willie's (laughs) chocolate. Oh my God. Wonk Willie's, is that what they call it? (laughs) Wonk Willie's chocolate factory. (laughs) (laughs) Um any other any else? Any any did you want to talk about rebound? Did you Palmer is great as a Scorpio? Oh, I like yes. Celebrities the Zodiac. The celebrities, the Zodiac. celebrities they none did. of them were in the together. same room at they all at the same time. Okay, they, they were in the same room, but here's, here's a fun little jaunt away from this film for a moment. Did you oh both God. look up the compatibility of your signs? Because it did make me start to be curious because oh. there was so much discussion of sign compatibility. Yes, did you, Adam did and it make I you curious? Are, did you look it up? Adam and I yes, are very compatible. We're, very we're compatible. Leo, Leo uh, and Harry's are famously very. Gotcha. What about you, Molly? I'm dating another Scorpio. Oh, no. And isn't Scorpio just like, you just have to be with Scorpios. That's pretty much it. Um, I think, I think it's maybe not the most advisable pairing is what I was gleaning. It wasn't Uh, like, it wasn't like girl run, but it was like, this can, in some ways you'll get each other. In some ways you're really going to understand one another. And in some ways this might be a lot. It might be a lot to be in one room together. (laughs) Yeah. Two Kiki Palmers, you know, in one room. Two like Palmers. you never know. It could be good or bad. Really the dream. Two Kiki, two Kiki Palmers, yeah. Yeah. I would say the I mean, Jennifer Lewis 
you can just give her lines and she will just give it to you however yeah i mean the lines are so funny because it's so written for their voices to the point that i was like did they just give them like notes of what they're going for and then be like but in your own words your own way just how would you say that if they did strong choice what good like yeah i liked post malone i'll say it Yeah. yeah i was impressed i did not have any they had no preconceived no notions. No preconceived notions. But it did feel like they were there. They like each person got one full day and they were like, well, literally the camera is rolling. Be Virgo. Just say something. Yeah. And then yeah. it's because it did feel kind of Frankenstein-y in that way where they just yeah. p- inserted clips that made sense. Yeah. There were like lines where the, the signs like talk to each other. And I was like, no one is. No one's talking. No one other. is talking to each other. Everything is like said to a third party yeah. and stitched together later. It's so funny. Well, I don't think I want to listen to any more of these songs, to be quite honest. I feel very yeah. set. I feel set. I think we have to go back quickly to the abusive boyfriend number just because oh, I think we have fuck. to address right. it. So the song I feel like is about like, you're my toxic ex that I'm going back. Or no, it's a rebound. It's not even it's a, called net, rebound. It's a rebound. So it's about yeah. like, you're not good for me, but like you're a rebound and that's all that it is. Mm-hmm. But the text, the on screen text is about an abusive relationship. Yeah. And I Physically, not, physically abusive relationship. Physically abusive relationship. And really not in like a, not in like a, oh, there's one moment that, that borderlines on it, but just like, that's what it is. And I don't know what Jennifer Lopez thought I was supposed to get out of the mismatch between the song and the stuff on screen. And then like, I don't know, like, and then the whole rest of the movie is like judging her from being a love addict when we like know that she's been in a, an actually yeah. a relationship mm-hmm. too. It's like a really weird, I do not know what they were thinking. With this it's number. so bizarre because there's multiple things I think that are the problem. So there's like, one is the inherent, like at this point in the movie, it's the fourth song. Well, it's the second. So it's like right after the movie started, basically. Yeah. And there's like the level of like, are they, is she, is, are, is she referencing an actual person that she was with at one point? Like there's the Jennifer Lopez as per, as like person who as created person. this. Like, <laughs> did she go through an abusive relationship that we didn't know about? This is like what we're learning. I don't, think so i think it's like just I mean, for like it totally seems possible though if that was if she wanted to be autobiographical i'm sure that you know when she was younger maybe before she was famous like that totally could have happened yeah there's something about it though that i was like wondering if it was like she felt like she had been in a an abusive relationship maybe not to like in a physical level but like in a like a, dom- how it's a being dominant p- possessive person yeah, was sure. like in her life blah 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 but then for the choreo to literally be like he was like basically beating her. And then there was like this tethered like rope that kept joining them. I thought that was like an interesting concept, but I was like, I feel like you should have thought about this a little more depending on like how you wanted to explore what you're trying to say. Cause I was like, you can't really use like abusive imagery just to be like, but it's, it's kind of cool that we're like really getting real. Like that's how it felt a little bit to me that I was like, is that what you're doing? Or are you alluding to something? But also like, the rest of the movie is so not about yeah. like a specific thing that I was like, no. well, that would be weird if the one thing she was like, I'll let you in on this. I was once like abused, which like fair enough if that's what happened. But like it didn't it was such a short part of the film, too. And she doesn't right. deal with it at all after no. that. Yeah, it almost feels like because the song is about rebound, they're in this giant glass house. I think the metaphor was more about like, this was a bad relationship that everyone saw me be in and knew it was bad, yeah. but I kept in well, it because it's a rebound. But I it's think like, it's, I think yeah. it's a people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones thing. Mm, Cause then she yeah. throw something and shatter it, no, which she is screams. Kind of, she screams and shatters it. Yeah. It's, it seemed a little bit like, cause then we see the other couples also in Un- glass unhealthy rooms, dynamic yeah. yeah right but like the glass rooms are to show you other it seems like not healthy relationships right like that yeah, was that yeah. was my mm-hmm. take i mean some of the stuff could just be like kink or whatever and that i'm not trying yeah. to judge but like i think in the context it was trying to tell me that it was unhealthy and yeah. like i sorry i heard myself echo and then it threw me off for a second i was like <laughs> is she saying that like everyone's in an unhealthy relationship so like don't be judging this one and that I stayed for this long or something like I don't know what the metaphor was trying to do but then if that is it like the weirdest part to me is like you can't be this famous and have I mean you can do whatever fine but like it's so jarring for someone who has like everything that you have to be like but I'm worried about what the little people say about me because I'm like you don't need to worry about that it's like what 
Fury and Chris will talk about on the read all the time where they're like, Nikki, Cardi, get off Twitter. Stop responding to people yeah. who are tweeting at you. Like no one, you are way more important than them. They are no, like it's not even like they're nobody, but like stop, you, stop giving to- them energy. Like, yeah. Be fine with yourself. Oh yeah. my God. It's so crazy to me. But then for this movie to be like, but I love myself. I'm like, but do you? Do you? Or is that just like you need you learned you needed to get to a point where you love yourself? But then like, I don't. This was a real wild trip. This was a real happy birthday to motor you. So- motor- motorcycle yeah. ride of a One movie year wiser. for sure. One year wiser. Well, let's move on. got some reviews okay this is a 75 percent no on rotten tomatoes <laughs> and it has an 81 no, percent audience score no it no. certainly does not there's it, no, no way it definitely there's does no way so i'm gonna read you some quotes um i'll continue with K- Kristen baldwin's entertainment weekly review which is what i started with she's the one okay. who summarized the uh, plot for us thank god as for the music it's not bad can't get enough is a certified bop and two other dance tracks rebound and hearts and flowers have memorable hooks the title track which the artist performs with please don't shoot the messenger her inner child is an unremarkable empowerment anthem but who among us comes to a j-lo joint just for the music she is more than a pop star an actress a fragrance mogul jennifer lopez is spectacle then now and always uh todd gilchrist from variety says to be fair it feels like a person who's generated her level of fame and success and attention will never truly be knowable to an ordinary person but this is me now a love story is the closest that they'll likely come and it's a testament to lopez's talent that she's able to take pop star wisdom and make it seem like a window into her soul no she doesn't (laughs) she doesn't and it that whole review was actually I disagreed with almost every point in his review. I'm going to be really honest. Richard Lawson. This is the one I wanted to read almost in its entirety from Vanity Fair. He writes, and yet this is me does accidentally make a worthy declaration in its stretches of dialogue. Lopez in therapy sessions with fat Joe Lopez at a meeting of love addicts, Lopez be confronted by concerned friends. The film presents something undeniable. Lopez is a great screen actor, maybe not possessed of a huge range, but nonetheless magnetic. It's the opposite of the film's intention. This is meant to be a mighty testament to Lopez's music, but this is me makes clear that Lopez's true calling is as, but a humble movie star. Why has she for so long seemed so unconvinced of that? I am among the Lopez boosters who point again and again to her terrific work in films like Selena, Out of Sight, Enough, and Hustlers. The music stuff has been a distraction from what could be a formidable movie career. That Lopez was denied an Oscar nomination for Hustlers nettles me to this day. It's not my place to tell anyone what to do with their one wild and precious life. So if the pop diva thing was what Lopez wanted most, then so be it. But she's so compelling in This Is Me when she isn't singing. It's like Mm -hmm. seeing someone clumsily try to juggle while paying no mind to the fact that they're on a unicycle. The unicycling is impressive enough. (laughs) (laughs) And I feel very strongly that I agree. I think she is a good movie star. She's a good actress. Like I said, I remember the scenes more than the songs. Yeah. In this. Right? Not the intention. Right. I don't know that I think I feel strongly enough about it that I would tell her you should just go be an actress and like stop with the music stuff. But. But I want her wrong. to be I want her to yeah. be an actress in the same way I want her to be a pop star where it's like froth. Yeah. I want like 
she is a good movie star. She's yeah. a star. She's not she an brings, actress. Okay. She brings an people enigmatic in. quality. People, yeah, she's, she's charismatic. Charismatic. So screen. charismatic on screen. Uh-huh. She like has. She really does have like a. a you do root for her. Like you do feel like when yes. she's playing these characters, like, oh, I totally relate to her. She's like, yeah. she's always got a girl with a backbone. She's never like a yeah. pushover. She's a little girl next door, but not too much. Like she's really got something there just by virtue of literally just being herself. Mm-hmm. But yeah, she is just way more interested in making music. But it's like the music Good is for her. The music is not transcendent enough to like carry these big these big themes. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think what you we were saying of like knowing your strengths, like your strength is like being able to make people feel really good with your music, like bops. Like we we define her music as bops because they are. They're like music you you they play in the club and you go crazy. Mm-hmm. They're not music that I, I want to explore depths of. Yeah. Human, human emotion. Imagine That's if okay. Abba, imagine if Abba had made a film out of one of their albums. This is us now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> well, what do the people have to say? On letterbox.com, Bella Baxter gave it one star. And wow. Said, After her Oscar win? Yes. <laughs> Uh, gave it one star and said, well, this was something I would die to know Iowa Debris' honest review. <laughs> and if you're not caught up culturally, mom, Iowa Debris, who is on The Bear, uh, it's a it's a show on TV. She was on Saturday Night Live. She won Live. a bunch of awards, yeah. She won a bunch of oh. awards. She was on Saturday Night Live. Jennifer Lopez was the musical guest that week. And there was like podcasts that resurfaced from like years ago of Io being like, Jennifer Lopez is a really bad pop star. She's not a good singer, blah, 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 blah. So she kind of had to like apologize and it was like a whole thing, blah, blah, blah. So it was very funny. Um, nothing is funnier than explaining a joke, by the way. <laughs> Absolutely not. I I didn't know how to say her name. So I actually needed that explanation because I wasn't putting it together. Fast oh, yes, yes, yes. Iowa yeah. Debris. She's great. Uh, Nina gave it five stars and said there has never been someone so obsessed with mythologizing their own life as Jennifer Lopez. I think we should all be very grateful to live in a time with someone so out of touch real- with reality. Just <laughs> masterful. Yeah. Clementine gave it one star and said, girl, be serious. <laughs> These are the, these are the two my two favorites. Okay. Ian Garner did not even rate it. But okay. He said Jennifer Lopez is truly one of the minds of our generation. <laughs> <laughs> and Trana Wintour gave it two stars and said protect hetero art. <laughs> And to that, I will say, I think there has to be some queer sensibility to making camp. And I would say that that is why this is not camp. Not there camp. Is, no, it is there is nothing queer about this movie. at all. No. Very straight. Very straight. No, you're right. Even with her right. friend, who's like clearly the one gay friend that she has. Yeah, but then he kept getting all of, when she was reading all of them during the intervention, she was like, you sleep with the first guy you ever see, you see before you even get serious with them. I'm like, oh, that's interesting that you gave that to the your gay friend. <laughs> well, it was weird because in the archetypes, <laughs> he's, when because of the credits, they show all their like character yes. names or whatever. And he's the one who's like her of all her friends. He's the one who also uh, falls in love too quickly or whatever. But like, Okay. <laughs> I didn't need world building of your friends. We just but okay. needed one gay person in the creative team just to be like, no, um, can we stop? Can we, can we just pause? ask a couple can questions? I just, I just have a few <laughs> questions. Oh, uh, who is everyone's MVP as birthday boy? I'm going to go first mm-hmm. and I'm going to not take Kiki, Kiki Palmer. Oh, thank you. I'm not, I'm not going to take Jennifer Lopez. I am going to take whoever... Let me see if I can find it. Actually, I didn't look it up, but I'm sure it's on IMDb. Um, oh, what's this movie called? Movie. This uh, is. She's in a Netflix movie called Atlas. Yes, she is. It's like an action, like a sci-fi action. I have to go to the crew tab. All cast and crew. Uh, okay, hold on. Produced by music, cinematography, editing, casting, production, art, direction, costume design, makeup. Bobbity, bobbity, blah. blah, blah. Stunts, camera, casting, costume, it's your music edition. Thanks. Hmm. I don't know how to find it. I wanted to know, I was trying to find whoever did the, um, the visuals 
for the the folklore, the Puerto Rican folklore at the oh, beginning yeah. and the credits. I thought they were like really beautifully done. They were really beautiful. Yeah. Um, but I don't know how to find that specific. Yeah, I don't know um, what the term is for that kind of an artist necessarily. Right. So whoever you are, slay. Slay. Uh, Molly. Oh, good. I get to take Kiki Palmer. Kiki Palmer is the best part of the movie. Um, I hope that they did just put her in room and say riff and that's what she created. And I mean, um, I'm she's, a, she's a very funny Maya Angelou Im- in imitation that she does. I wanted to say, I wanted to say, I discovered in that moment that Kiki Palmer doing a Maya Angelou impression just becomes Angela Bassett. Yes. That's, oh, yes. It just, yes. Uh, suddenly that's it. It synchrony and it's just it's greater than it started with you know yes, what i mean and it is great. angela bassett mm-hmm. oh he's the lover isn't he mm-hmm. yeah that's the friend that's the friend name the lover i will stick to the zodiacs and say you know i'll you know i'll throw it to the rest of the zodiacs that they were mm-hmm. game to do this they said let me let me give my good friend jenny mm-hmm. um you know, I want to be invited to her Thanksgiving. So yeah. let me let me show up for this one day of shooting. It's okay. I get to wear like a fun little Grecian outfit or whatever. Right. Um, I think like, yeah, Kim Petras, like I think was so like that when we talk about like good cameo casting, mm. it's this 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 circle of zodiacs really is like yeah. This is this is like 101 cameo casting. You find a person, I, you give them exactly what they you know them yeah. for, and they do it. I think we should also really shout out Jane Fonda as like kind of the anchor of the Zodiac. It's atrocious that she wasn't in the Wikipedia page because she's like, I feel like in a way the main character in the Zodiac scenes, that she is like the one that is kind of reining everybody in and getting them to a topic. Um, She, she's great in it. Yeah. She is. She also, I feel bad for her. She has a lot of the like heavy lifting of like, the transitional lines yeah, that are the like plot kind of go together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, but what is she going to do now? Zoom. <laughs> it's um, almost that she needs some hearts and petals. Yeah. Isn't it funny? I'm just realizing this. Jennifer Lopez's character name is famously the artist. Yeah. But young her is young Jenny. Oh, mm. it's funny that they named. I'm so- Wait, so is it autobiographical? Is that what you're it seems like we'll it would know. lead you to believe that. Yeah. Um, but I also want to be clear, Jennifer Lopez, I don't want you to write a memoir either. Like I'm, no. I'm fine with just not knowing stuff too. Yeah. I think that's the way about to... most celebrities though, mm-hmm. to be fair. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, maybe we're not the best readers of the film for that reason that like, I am supremely uninterested in celebrity gossip and information about people's lives. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I like celebrity gossip, but I like it told by gossipers. Not I don't like it told by the celebrities. Gotcha. Yeah. I like a blind item. You know, that's. Fun. Oh, we love a Dumois moment. Yeah. I don't know what that. I don't know what you're talking about. Dumois is a like an Instagram. Instagram account that's just blind oh, items. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 I like like occasional moment. Like I loved the Sophie Turner Joe Jonas divorce and the way mm-hmm. that people immediately did not believe his narrative. Like that. Those kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, I yeah. like. But it's a. It's a. You, it's you a know where Kate on is. Top of my day. I'm still trying to get a handle on the Kate situation because you mm. sent me that tweet thread and I don't have Twitter. But like. Oh, uh, right. I think I have I have a sense of the Kate situation. Of what's going on mm. there? Yeah. I wish we had a bigger sense of the Kate situation, but you know, mm. in due time, all things in Come out due on the wash. time. Yeah. Well, Molly, what's your what's your closer this week? Did you see it in the doc? Is that why you're laughing? <laughs> Who is you now? Who is you now? <laughs> What did you say was this is me then? 2000 and 2002. Two? 22 years ago. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Post 9 11. Oh. Stop. Absolutely stop it. Well, she's okay. a New Yorker. <laughs> okay. Let's say we're a uh, day of recording. Okay. I May- thought you were going to say, let's say it all together. And you're gonna go <laughs> all three of us are all the go. same person. Um, day of recording, March 13th, 2022 to now. Yeah. Who is you now? Wait, what did you say? <laughs> March 13th, 20, 2022? March 13th, 2002. To oh. now. Who is you now? So Comparing fifth, from... Fifth grade. No, fourth grade. Fourth grade. Mm, no, fifth. Oh, 
No, Mar- March. Oh yeah, fourth. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. September eleventh yeah. happened. I'm sorry that I'm <laughs> See? Now. Adam got you. That's it why I brought it up. A fourth grade. Yeah. <laughs> or do we all want to go around the share where we were? Still in fourth grade. Oh my god. Um. A taller fourth grade. I'm taller than I was then. Mm-hmm. I'm an American uh, citizen. Since uh, then. congrats. Yeah. What's your big? What's the big thing that you're trying that to get learned? Oh. In those 22 thing. years. And that did make me want to throw up saying 22 years, by the way. Yeah. Mm. I would say for me now, be thankful for your health. Mm. Mm. This mm. is me now. Gout. <laughs> this is me, gout. This is me, gout. <laughs> I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say uh, a more sincere answer, which is that uh, that your your worth is not tied up in your accomplishments. Yes. Yeah. That's been more of a journey of the last few years for me than that mm-hmm. whole sp- span of time. But I think if mm-hmm. I had learned it earlier, it would have been a better twenties for me, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fourth grade was probably fourth to sixth grades were very hard for me. Uh, I had like no friends. <laughs> um, and so I think the big thing that I would have said I learned is like just how to like be funny in order to make sure people liked me. <laughs> that's, I feel like maybe Adam is not the healthiest. Uh, <laughs> oh, I think well, there's, so always, there's things, always more. Well, Molly, there's things we can grow to le- keep learning as we age. <laughs> Even though some no. of us here think that anyone over the age of 40 learning anything is disgusting. Yeah, I think it's gross for you to have <laughs> self-growth after 40. Um, no, I feel like that's how I like ingratiated myself to people was I just had to learn to stop crying all the time. I constantly cried in fourth and fifth grade. Constantly. <laughs> it was wild. Yeah. Now we're going to spend the rest of the episode to unpack... <laughs> I don't know what it was either because nothing really happened in fourth and fifth grade. Like my dad, this is real deep. My dad <laughs> left in like first grade. I'm glad that you're so, an editor so you can decide whether or not you want this to be in there. So yeah. That's oh, fine. Yeah. 12 people okay. listen to this podcast. That's fine. Right. Sure. Um, so there's nothing like ha- that happened that year. And like as much as I like LOL about 9-11, like nothing, that didn't actually affect me in that way. So yeah. I don't, I, wow. I've never figured out what it was, but I do. Well, there is a part of me that I think that was where I started realizing that I was different from everybody else. Mm. Oh yeah. And I, I, I didn't like that. I was like, it was like, I was like outside of my body realizing like, Oh, you're, it's going to be harder. And I was like yeah. annoyed. So I just was like crying all the time. I was like, I think, that's really fair. I think it's also like, it's kind of like, you know, double digits. The like preteen era is like yeah. really hard it's, because it's, it's, your brain is getting like more complex and you're not sure how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And also like it's, you're kind of straddling that line between like, you're actually dealing with the teenage stuff and you're still a kid. And Mm -hmm. I know that people talk about how the like eight to 10 range is a real, you have to decide as a parent, you're going to invest in your kid because, um, you, kids at this age world is like easier to not engage with them as much because they like they can kind of get along they don't need the like constant prompting that like a six-year-old needs in order to like you got to be like get your sweater get your water bottle get out the right you know what i mean like you don't have to do that kind of stuff anymore and it's before they hit the emotions of the teen years but if you don't spend time with your kid and build up the relationship then then when they do hit those teen years all of a sudden they're going to be really distant from you. And like, so you have to like remember to spend time with your kid at the age where they're not kind of asking for your time in the same way that they have been. So I think that it's a time where some people get kind of self isolated because you can kind of function on your own to some extent. I want to be clear that I'm talking about like broad strokes. I'm not, this is not like a reflection on your mom or anything like that. But like, I think that that can be a hard time for kids because adults are maybe paying a little bit less close of attention in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But are these the lessons that we would make our, about? this is me CGI extravaganza movie about that's like the one, like pure <laughs> it's purity. That's the lesson that you would make like layers of metaphors with. I have never, 
Uh, the closest. Okay, so the only thing that I could ever think that, like, obviously, I would never make this, but like, <laughs> like, what is the what is the thing that I've learned that I feel like, oh, I could like, you could express it and talk about this in a one man show for yeah. an hour. Yeah, and I genuinely don't think I've learned anything. I don't think that I think this is the thing. I would have to learn something that I feel like is totally like wholly original or like yeah. my story is like super specific and unique, mm-hmm. but I feel like I live a pretty standard existence, especially mm-hmm. like in 2024 when like, it's not rare to see gay people. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe like 15, 20 years ago, I would be like, Oh, it's weird that I'm gay. And that's like kind of what I went through with like in like high school. Cause I was like the only out guy in my high school for a mm-hmm. couple of years. But like now I'm like, I just go to work. I come home. And even if there are things that I think I'm learning, I'm like, everybody else is learning those too. It's I'm not like original. Yeah. That's what we fought for. Right. It's for you to be like, my, my life seems really unremarkable, even though I'm a gay man. Like that's great. That's social progress. But it's also like, it takes away your ability to do a one man show. So I'm really sorry about that. (laughs) And you know, gays love. Yeah. Yeah. I want to, I want to acknowledge that. There was a, there was a podcast that I listened to still listen to where I remember during the like marriage debate of like, will we get gay marriage? I remember him being like, there is a part of me that doesn't want gay marriage to pass because like, it'll make us less interesting if we can like get married. And I was like, why don't, I don't know if that's a good reason. I mean, like that's a little bring it about in that way. I think if someone were confessing it in a way of like, I want to acknowledge this feeling that I think we shouldn't pursue, I think would be okay. But if somebody like really genuinely, but let's let's make a political argument based on that, that would be a problem. Um, Yeah. I mean, I think, to the point of the platitudes, like a lot of getting older, I feel like is things that you heard people say and you just like learn to realize how true they are or mm-hmm. resonate on a deeper level or a thing that you like knew that you shouldn't do, but it took you a while to like really get yourself to an emotional place where you could stop. Like, mm-hmm. but none of it is, I think you're right, Adam. Like, I don't think there's anything I could make a one woman show about and be like, I don't think anyone else has had this, this experience, experience and it's important yeah. that like I'm the person that tells this thing. I actually mm-hmm. remember, Archie, did you take playwriting with me or you just also No, we took I it took together. Playwriting. Yeah, you we did. took it we together. All did, okay. We all did directing together, didn't we? We did directing together. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um when I took playwriting, I remember there was a day where I was talking to the professor after class and he said, Do you think your life is interesting? And I was like, No. <laughs> and he was like, I think that's a BS answer, basically. Like he he thought I was gonna say yes and his point was gonna be like write what you know or whatever. Right, what and he clearly yeah, yeah. he clearly like didn't know what to do with the fact that I was like, I don't think it is interesting. But like I still think about that and I'm still like, it's not. It's interesting to like be myself. Like I'm not yeah, right. walking around being like I'm bored existing. <laughs> yeah, right. But like there's nothing about my life that I think that other people should watch or learn about on amazon it's, yeah. prime <laughs> it's just it's just the i lady. think there i think there are way more interesting stories to tell than my own like genuinely yes. that's why yeah. i don't i'm not interested in telling my story period and yet period. i have so many yes. avenues in which i talk about myself all the time i mean time. we it's very funny that we have a podcast and we're like we're boring well there's no reason to listen to us about it <laughs> <laughs> i've never once held someone at gunpoint and made them listen to me talk so for okay, that. Well, most of us haven't. Well, I can't speak for everybody here. Okay. I don't know what okay. everyone does here. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like, my real answer would probably be more of like, um, like actually actually taking the time to do the things that I actually wanted to do. Because I do feel like in the past mm-hmm. 22 years, it's just like things of like being told that this is what you're supposed to do. But that I mean, like, there's and then it just keeps manifesting different layers of like obviously being like the only person that went to America to go to school here Mm -hmm. and then, you know, like graduating college in America and then like, like it just, I feel like for me, it keeps manifesting in ways of like, just like listen to what you want to do, what your body is trying to tell you what to do. So I feel like in the, in the CGI Fantasia of the movie, it's like me doing all of these different roles and jobs and it causes the heart factory to really explode. But I think I have to really, but I think we're also in a time too with your story where like we are as a culture, I think more generally interested in like people kind of trying to walk in two worlds. Like you yes. have an immigrant experience mm-hmm. of like, how do you connect back to your like Filipino culture, but, but also like, American. how like, are you also American? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. How do you navigate that? And that's like more interesting than like me just being like, 
When I was 14, I came out. I bet you've never heard a coming out story before. So let me tell it. You know what I mean? And then this I got married me now. And then I like met RJ. I had no like troubles in my 20s. I didn't go through the troubles of my 20s. So yeah. Wow. We should we should do a bonus app by which I mean, just we should do a Zoom meeting where we should compare experiences of you two <laughs> meeting each other at 22 versus <laughs> Versus my whole experience of dating. No, just like <laughs> your your lives were very different in terms of mm-hmm. the trajectory oh, yeah. of finding relationships because you met in college. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now I feel like we were so young when we all met each other. But yeah. I also think that comes with me being a person who like values stability. Like yeah. Yeah. RJ is like always. I'm the dreamer. That would be well, my archetype as one of Jayla's friends. The dreamer. I'm the realist. And you're the realist. Mm. And Molly's the klepto clearly in the wedding. <laughs> stealing silverware. Because <laughs> that's an important archetype. That's an important that's, friend archetype. And that's who I am now. Yeah, uh-huh. that's, yeah. I this am dot dot dot. Now, now a <laughs> yeah. love story. Okay, that's oh. enough. I don't remember. This oh, you gotta is say something. me. Now. <laughs> it's just the same song. And we didn't even play it during the episode. Maybe I'll throw it in at some point for just for fun. Okay, bye. Thank you for listening to the best revival of a podcast, Showgaze. You can find us on social media. Adam is at Adam Noecker on Twitter. RJ is at RJ Food Rocks on Instagram. And Molly is at Molly Matiny on Instagram. This episode was edited and mixed by Adam Noecker. This has been an Ampliverse production. You can find our show page and more information at theampliverse.com. If you'd like to send us your own takes on the movie we just watched, reach out to us via email and we might read it aloud on the show. Our email is showgazemoviemusical at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find your podcasts. And as always, rate, review, and subscribe to help others find the show. And now, as always, the show must go on. So stick around to hear what we're going to be watching next episode. He's here. Cyrano? Cyrano. Cyrano. Pleasure to meet you, Cyrano de Bergerac. You're a freak. Freak. Best friend, I'd be very angry with you if you died. My sole purpose on this earth is to love Roxanne. Does she know? The world will never accept someone like me and a tall, beautiful woman. We have no money. A clever marriage is your only option. I won't be rescued. I'm not in distress. Love, does that mean nothing to you? Children need love. Adults need money. I need something to die for. Write poems and cry for, and I won't be ashamed. I'd give anything for someone to say that they can't live without me and they'll be there forever. I have a confession to make. I am madly in love. Perhaps he feels the same. But I've never actually spoken to him of your love. Of anything. <laughs> He is Christian. Christian Newbelet. He's a new recruit in your regiment. Of course he is. A woman like Roxanne wants wit, romance, poetry. I don't know how to speak romantically. I am a poet. My words upon your lips. I will make you romantic. Will you make me handsome? She loves me! I give for someone to say. Like you do in your letters. You are a beautiful flower. I am not a flower. I need more. You're in love with her. My fate is to love her from afar. We must let her decide our fate. She must have the choice.